Hi everyone, my name is Dan Scott and today we're going to be answering your questions about Lightroom. Frequently asked questions, the things that everyone wants to know. All right, so the first question today is, what is it exactly? The uh, was actually the question was, what the heck is Lightroom? <laughs> that came through. Okay, so what the heck is it? It is photo correction and photo retouching. Okay, so uh, that's what it does. Okay, all to do with photographs. You can do a little bit of video in there as well, but mainly to do with photographs. Okay, what is the advantages of using Lightroom instead of Photoshop? It's probably the biggest question. They've got their full retouching. So let's discuss Lightroom versus Photoshop and what it's kind of for first, and then we'll talk about the retouching part. Okay, so uh, what's the differences? They have a lot of crossover. Okay, you can do a lot of things in the same way. A lot of people have Photoshop skills and don't see the point of Lightroom. Where you would see the point of Lightroom is volume. Okay, if you've got one or two images you want to work on, just use Lightroom. Uh, sorry, Photoshop. It's fine if you know it already. Okay, if you have to deal with 10 images or 100 images from a photo shoot, then Photoshop is no good. Okay, you can do it. Just takes forever. Lightroom is super quick and super easy um, to work on that sort of stuff. Um, so that's the big difference is volume. Okay, you can do a lot of the same corrections. It just takes a lot longer in Photoshop. But when you are, say, a graphic designer working on one image, Fine, you can take the time, get it perfect, get it how you want it, you know the skills. But you go to 10 images and they don't all need to look the same. You can do batch stuff in, uh, oh, I need to be back to Big Dan. <laughs> Hi everyone, <laughs> I was Tiny Dan there for a second. In a circle, trapped, now I'm in the big rectangle. Hey, and um, so um, what I got lost, Photoshop, yeah, uh, you can do a lot of those things. Lightroom does bulk stuff um, really quickly. And the other thing is, is like when you're dealing with raw images, okay, Lightroom does it all together, okay? Uh, you know, you can work on them quickly, work on a lot of them. Uh, Photoshop, you need to then start using something like Camera Raw as well as Photoshop. And the other big difference, the big point of difference between the two is organization. So if you've got a lot of images in Photoshop, you just have to store them in your folder in the right folders, okay? And if you need to find them later on, you need to find your images. And because they're all called like DSC112751.jpg, 112751 it's tricky to do. You can use things like Bridge, okay? And that's a way people do. They use Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, sorry, Photoshop, Bridge, and Camera Raw, okay? All of those things, Lightroom. So if you're doing all those things, you can do it, but Lightroom is all those things all together. The search function, the categorization, all that sort of stuff, and the backing up all happens automatically in Lightroom. What was that long answer to that question? Uh, what is the difference between Bridge, Camera Raw, and Lightroom? So what people do is uh, Lightroom does it all, like I said. People will open up their big shoot from their camera in Bridge, okay? It's a good way of sorting out images, okay? Then they will, if they're raw images, not JPEGs, they'll then open them in Camera Raw to do the editing, okay? And then once you're done with that, you've got to open that up in Photoshop, okay? And you can do some other stuff in Photoshop for sure, okay? But that's the process. Lightroom does all those things together. You just open them in Lightroom, it opens raw images, categorization's really easy, finding images. You can do all the retouching that you normally want to do for a photograph. Um, yeah, you do that all in that one thing instead of three. Uh, the next question, do you have any tips on how I should file my folders and management in Lightroom? So that's a big one. Up until recently, what I'd do is you'd open up Lightroom and you'd have to use tags. I would say in my course, use tags so that you can find it. And nobody would ever would. Nobody done that in Lightroom. You're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tag everything. You do for the first couple of shoots and then you don't and then you don't and then it's a big mess. The cool thing about what Lightroom's become now, okay, is that um, it has artificial intelligence. You know, people talk about AI and you're like machine learning and you're like, Mm, is it self is that only for self-driving cars no this is one of the times where actually adobe have machine learning and ai i don't know the difference um squished into a program where you can start doing so i want to really show you real quick i just want to do a really quick thing just to show you the power of using lightroom over bridge or something else and um, or camera raw or something let me quickly show you let's go to that one and then let's switch that don't cut the fans off my fans, right? <laughs> People, <laughs> that is an empty disc. Oh, look at that. Okay, now where are you on my desk? Okay, so I've got these photographs, right? Whole bunch of stuff. 
What is that, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's not look at that one. So we've got stuff and they're all smushed together. But say I want a picture of a car. Okay, I got lots of cars. I like taking photos of cars. So let's take, just show me my cars. See the top here in the search? Does that zoom in? It doesn't. Okay, and um, if I type in car and hit enter, look what happens. It just picks all the cars I've ever taken photos of. It's just madness. But like, say you want a spe special car. Okay, I want a car that is red. You can't really see at the top because it's really small, but I type in red car and look at that. It goes through all my photographs that I've ever taken in my life and finds red cars. Okay. It's pretty amazing. Like watch this. If I type in birds, this is the best search you can do if you're doing my course. Okay. Oh, I didn't do it. Birds, plural, bird. Hmm. Oh, it used to bring up me in the bird suit, <laughs> which was my funny gag. It's got better and didn't do it. So it's actually better, but it ruined my gag. But you can see how search is great in here. So the other thing you can do is you can start using something called albums. So albums are down here on the left and they are amazing for organizing things. You can see all, uh, some of my ones across here. Okay, so that is um, my tip and my answer to that question. And for organizing files and folders, okay. Uh, is Lightroom just for professional photographers or just for... Uh, for photographers in general no um yes okay anybody that's got a camera that needs to sort them out you might not call yourself a photographer i do because i know how to use the camera and like but i'm not a professional photographer i am not a great photo i'm a great retoucher for sure okay lightroom photoshop i think i'm pretty amazing okay if i don't say so myself but a photographer I have to shoot a lot of different shots at different exposures and focal lengths and all sorts of stuff to get something good. Okay, whereas somebody else, professional, would do it a lot better and know, you know, a lot more experienced. But I use Lightroom because, you know, it's the it's that bulk stuff. I can make an edit to one of those car shots, okay, and get them nice, and then just go copy and paste, and it bulks on every like the hundred other car photos that I've done. And if you do nothing else than do some editing and just apply it to them all. That is amazing power for Lightroom. So no, it is built for photographers, but if you are an amateur and like you're just taking stuff on your phone, that is fine because you can upload it all into Lightroom. There's a mobile app version of Lightroom, okay? So if you're a designer out there who has, has ever run into the like, oh man, I wish this was easy to sort out or categorize or using like contact sheets to try and sort out images from a photo shoot from another photographer, you're not the photographer, you're just the retoucher and you, you're getting contact sheets and trying to work through them all just use Lightroom, it's super good. And um, I am going to go, where's my next question? Uh, do you need a fancy camera to get the most out of Lightroom? Or can I work with photos off my iPhone? Any phone, okay, anything modern, any kind of like, like this thing here is is held together with sellotape. It's got huge cracks along the side there, okay. It is a Pixel 4, it is two generations old. It's, it's still the premium version a couple of years ago. And um, it does, it's amazing what I can do with Lightroom. It kind of goes, you. it gets you from um, good to nearly great. If you've got a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, like I've got this uh, Sony here, this uh, A7S III, it is amazing. I can't believe how good it is. The lens is probably the best thing about it, the Sigma lens. But if I take photos on both of those, I can clearly tell, because I can get great depth of field on this big camera, but 80%, 90% of the people out there wouldn't know that I've taken these amazing photographs with my camera because on my cell phone because I can do such good work in Lightroom I can kind of everything shifts up right if you've got a Nokia <laughs> from the days it will make them better not that much better but like shift them up okay and if you've got a really old camera it'll shift them up that kind of scale of goodness okay quite substantially and if you've got a great camera you can get exquisite images but you can take good images from a phone and make them great Okay. The other nice thing about it is we go through this in the course is that most cameras will shoot raw images. And if you don't know what a raw image is, you might be seeing it around in the design space and don't really understand it, but it captures way more data. Okay. And then you can do some brilliant things in Lightroom. You can do stuff with just plain old JPEGs as well. Okay. So yes, you can use a crappy old phone that is taped together. There you go. Perfect for Lightroom. And um, let's, uh, uh, I have Photoshop. Do I need Lightroom? Can Photoshop not do everything Lightroom does? It can, except it's probably in a hundred pieces. Whereas Lightroom, especially CC, the, the one we do in the course, not classic, 
is really concise. Okay, you've got it all in one little box, exactly what you wanna do. Whereas Photoshop is quite spread through things. If you're a master of Photoshop, sure you can do it. I'm a master at Photoshop, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it's just too much work. It's really easy to learn Lightroom and the results, <clears throat> honestly, I can't get the same results in Lightroom than I can in Photoshop, maybe because I give up because there's, there's too many things to do to get it to there. Whereas Lightroom, there's a lot of sliders that do multiple things at the same time, like clarity. If you've ever, if you ever open up Lightroom, open it tonight, throw in an image, grab clarity, yank it up, and you'll be like, that's it, I'm a genius. I'm, greatest, <laughs> I'm the greatest photographer that ever lived. Like, and it's just one slider. Whereas to get to that same point in Photoshop, takes a lot of uh, finessing. I could get there, just take a lot more time. Another good question, I'm a graphic designer. Should I learn Lightroom? Uh, where would it fit in my workflow? So if you have to do multiples of stuff, if you're a person using Photoshop that's using actions or batches, if you know what those things are, you should be using Lightroom. If you don't, and you're only working on one or two images every now and again, don't worry about it. Okay, you can still get great images and great quality out of Photoshop, especially if you're not the photographer. Often if you're, a, say, a graphic designer and or a web designer and you're using images, Often somebody else has done the work. You're using stock library images, okay? They don't need much finessing because somebody else has done it using Lightroom probably, okay? Or Camera Raw or something else. So yes and no. The other question is, I'm a web designer. Should I learn uh, uh, Lightroom? Where would it fit in my workflow? So no, um, I would if you are say working on a site where there is a lot of photographs coming in and maybe you're not getting like the quality that you think you could get. Experiment with Lightroom. If you've got, the Adobe license or get a free trial, just throw some of the images that you're doing that you normally guys, you know, normally use or you normally get from stock library stuff or from a photographer that you guys use. Throw it into Lightroom, do the first chunk of the course, okay, and just see you like, you might be like, man, this is, if it's only moving the needle a little bit, nah. But if it's moving the needle a lot, which Lightroom can do with good images, it can make them amazing, then yeah, I would be looking at it as my in my workflow. And the thing is, so many people, if you're in the creative industry, okay, web design, UX design, videography, uh, graphic design, if you're in anything like that, you often spill out into other things like photography. You might not call yourself a photographer because you're just using your phone, but man, phones are pretty amazing, like what you can do with them. Some of the new big smartphones are iPhones, Samsungs, they take some pretty spectacular photographs and you can move them along. Um, yeah, with Lightroom. Uh, another question, I'm a video creator. I talked about that one. Um, I don't trust the cloud. How can I make sure that my files are backed up um, outside of Lightroom CC? Um, so that is another good question. And um, what, yeah, one of the things with Lightroom is that you upload it, okay, in, you know, drag it off your camera or import it off your camera and Lightroom will automatically back it up for you. Now, if you don't trust it, and you're using something else like Dropbox or some other backup thing, everyone's using Dropbox, um, or you're backing up to a, a hard drive, still do the hard drive one, but don't also do Dropbox. Like Adobe are backing up your, as part of your license, you get like free backup. Yeah, it's free. Well, it's as part of your subscription. Okay, and it's quite big. I haven't run out of my um, limitation yet and you can upgrade it. But basically you just import it and they start updating. And the cool thing about them is that and while you're working on them, say for the next 30 days, they will um, stay on your hard drive. But after a while, you can change these settings. It will just end up on the cloud. You can still see them and search for them. All those images I showed you a second ago are all backed up on the cloud now, not on my hard drive. Why is that good? You can turn that off. I love it. <clears throat> I was a bit dubious about it at the beginning. But what happens is they back up. They're there. You can download them. Okay. I've still, you can still copy them onto a hard drive if you're worried about the cloud. But what happens is you can still see a version and if you want to edit it, okay, you can say, I want to edit this and it will pull it down and you can use it. Just keep your hard drive free and clear of huge amounts of big images, especially if you're shooting raw. So I was dubious about cloud-based stuff, automatic, what's going to happen. I'm totally sold on it now. I love it. Okay, there you go. Um, I've got one last question. Then I've got student questions coming. So throw in your student questions. I'm a total Photoshop newbie. Should I learn Photoshop first or Lightroom first? It depends. If you're going to be a designer, learn Photoshop. If you're going to be more in the retouching uh, photography side, learn Lightroom. 
And um, one last thing I want to throw in there is the course. Is there's actually two versions of Lightroom. Okay, there's Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC. What is the difference between those two? I should have covered this at the beginning. Uh, is Lightroom CC is the newer version. CC uh, Classic is the older version. Not that it's worse. The trouble with Classic, and the reason I didn't make the course around it, is that it is harder to learn. Okay, it has just as you can get just as good of results in the new version than the old version. The old version though has about 20 ways of doing the same thing. Okay, so Classic is amazing. People know how to work it and master it. And I used to use it. It's awesome. The trouble is, is that it's so old now that they never get rid of anything. And there's like, oh, like there's this new feature and people still use the old feature. Okay, so they keep this old thing and they had to get to a point where Adobe was like, we have to do one or two things. We have to quit. Uh, cancel the classic version or the version they were working on and make it all brand new to make it easier, more accept, uh, you know, accessible for people that are new and get rid of all the tools that kind of are duplicate tools or don't get, or don't ever get used. Okay. And they were worried about losing professional photographers that have been using classic for a lot, uh, for a long time. Okay. Um, so what they did is they forked it. They said, we're going to have two versions, which is a pain in the butt to be a teacher because I have to decide which one to teach. And I look at them both and I'm like, this new one, they're putting more effort into it. They say they're not, but heaps of new features are coming out on Lightroom CC and it's just easier. Like it's cool to know all the buttons are on classic and what they all do. But when a lot of them get you to the same sort of point, and you're not sure which one to do and it's very technical. No, I don't think it's that useful. And, and so yeah, we're using Lightroom CC. Okay. Or sometimes they call it Lightroom desktop. They haven't even decided on their naming pretty well yet. They've called them different things over time, but, um, Check the version which you're doing. Basically, the easier one is not classic. We're using the other version of Lightroom. All right, student questions. Uh, Taylor, you have gone through and make sure they're all good. Okay, and I'll just read them out. Uh, Sam uh, Bingham, do you touch on grading through graphs? I've only ever used left, uh, left, right sliders. Yes. So it, we use the um, point curves, okay, to do the grading. We don't do a huge amount, mainly because the sliders get you to most of what everybody wants okay but we do cover the um point curve so kind of like curves in photoshop if you know that okay i show you how to use that as well we don't spend a huge amount of time on it because in my opinion you can do so much without it okay, and just use the easier sliders but it isn't there for the people that there's, there's people like you sam who are like i want to use that thing okay so we cover it in there not extensively so a uh, question from vincent and uh, we, when will Photoshop Essentials Merit come out or I'm missing something? Uh, it will come out. Yes, just we're working through it. Like we've only leased, this is only our like third course. It's a lot of work for us to get ready and do. And we're trying our hardest to get all the different merit certificates out. We're working on this one because it's the course gets launched now. But yeah, we will backdate them all. But it's not as easy as just flicking a switch because there's questions to write and lots of it. But Photoshop will be high up the list because it's quite a popular course. Uh, Narahan, Narayan, uh, Sharma, I have completed, uh, I've completed some of your courses on Udemy and Skillshare. Can I apply for badges? Uh, so if you are doing the courses on the other platforms, perfect. Go do them on there. You can get a certificate from Udemy. You, I don't think you want from Skillshare. The badges, you have to become a Bring a Laptop subscriber. Okay. But if you want the badge, you could do this easily by going sign up for Bring a Laptop for a month free year, whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, and all we want you to do is grab all your class files that you did on Udemy, throw them up onto bring your laptop, explain, Hey, I've done when you apply for your certificate, say, Hey, I haven't watched all the videos because I've done it on um, Udemy. Okay. Here's my certificate from Udemy. And then we'll give you the badge and the, you know, but you have to supply all those class projects you do. We'll still go and check them. But the videos you've watched, as long as you can prove that you've done it on Udemy, you don't have to rewatch them all. So go sign up, get your badges. Badges are awesome. It's like my favorite bit on bringing a laptop. Uh, I don't get any badges for some reason. <laughs> I feel like I should get them if I'm the chief badge creator. That's Victoria. No, just I have no badge. I get a uh, team next to me. I don't know. Anyway, oh. uh, as well and. Um, just if you have joined us just now, and um, we are launching the Lightroom Essentials course right now, uh, you can go to byol.com slash Lightroom. 
okay, and do the Lightroom Essentials course right now. Okay, get a certificate, bring your own laptop, and um, there's a merit badge to earn as well. And we have, what else do we have? Yeah, that's what I can think of. <laughs> Lots of other stuff. TAs to help out. Um, keep asking questions because I'm going to go through all of these. If you've got a question about anything, Lightroom, anything else. Uh, Technojoid, is Snap Speed a good alternative to Lightroom? Yep, I haven't used it. <laughs> I use Lightroom. I'm an Adobe fanboy. Yeah, I don't know. You'll have to check somebody else. Hendrik, uh, would you, oh, um, Hendrik, would you do a 3D software tutorial such as Blender, Adobe Substance, or Cinema 4D? And do you plan on doing an After Effects Essentials in advance course? I'd love that. So first up, I've done After Effects Essentials. It was before I started calling it Essentials, okay? And I made two of them, just to confuse everyone. There's two courses. There's uh, uh, After Effects for Motion Graphics and After Effects for Infographics, of course. Uh, so decide which is, they're both very the same. We start, kind of get started. One builds infographics, one builds motion graphics, and do them both, okay? Uh, but that's kind of my essentials. I will remake it and then make an advanced course. But because I feel like I've got one, even though I didn't call it essentials before I got into this kind of naming convention, I feel like it's done. There's other things I can do. The other one was 3D. Am I going to do 3D? Yeah, I just need to find the right one. Uh, Cinema 4D felt like it was the one I was going to do, but then Adobe went and bought uh substance and yeah i played around with that i could do one blender is probably the bigger you know there's more people out there it's free i haven't decided yet i want there to be a clear winner it's a bit tricky i don't have one uh whip trend is lightroom only for photographers we answered this one earlier on but anybody that has to do multiple images all at once and any sort of photo retouching Okay, big difference between that uh, Lightroom and Photoshop. Photoshop is more like photo montage, okay, where you could do like, you can't clear cut in Lightroom. That's a, one of the big differences as well. Okay, you can't like put it onto white background. You can separate the background from the person and kind of do your edits, but you can't like clear cut it and put text in it. That's Photoshop's job, okay? But often, I'll do my retouching in, Photoshop, in Lightroom to make it look great, send it to Photoshop, round trip it back, Go, you know, cut off the background, put text on it, and then send it back to Lightroom. You can totally do that. Um, <clears throat> where's ah another uh, uh, Nadja? Uh, I don't have Lightroom. Will it be a good course to learn about photography? Nope. This one here is mainly about using the software to retouch already existing images. Okay, so no, you can get a free trial for Lightroom and you know do the course. But no, I would just do, um, yeah, it's not a photography main course. It's uh, focusing on the software. Um, all right. Taylor, could you delete them as they go? Uh, Hendrik, uh, considering recent developments, what's your thoughts on Figma XD? Oh, I wonder if that one come through. Uh, did you, do you think they'll discontinue XD? Any need to update the Figma course? Um, so what are my thoughts? So I was at Adobe Max recently and Figma is definitely, you know, Adobe have bought Figma. So there's two UX design programs that were, that were competing it out to win the, win the war. Okay, uh, Adobe's XD and Figma. Okay, and Adobe went and bought Figma. Why? Because Figma was more, had more market share and Adobe just wanted to buy it. Okay, and so they'll probably, I don't know, I don't know any more than you know, kind of bumped into a lot of Adobe people, but they were very tight-lipped about it. But I think they will, or they'll probably wrap XD up, or they'll smush them together. The thing is like, if you're thinking, oh man, I'm halfway through the XD course, should I be doing Figma? Do the XD, we don't know what's gonna happen, and they're really similar. Hands up in the comments have done XD and have done Figma. You'll notice that it's way easier to learn one once you've learned the other because they are very similar. They may go, this is going to be enterprise only for Figma and keep XD for the freelancer part of the Creative Cloud subscription. Okay. Or they might kill XD. They're probably not going to kill uh, Figma because they spent $20 billion on it. But hey, who knows? Um, Hendrik. Uh, any experience with um, uh, Lumina AI, an intriguing AI photo editor that it integrates uh, with Photoshop. So I've used 
Topaz, which is a similar sort of one. I'm waiting for Adobe to do something like either buy one of those companies and stick it into Lightroom or Photoshop. Basically what it's doing is Lightroom, what we do is we fix stuff that's already there and it's amazing what it can do. Some of these other ones, like it's probably uh, Lumina, Lumina and, and Topaz, they use artificial intelligence to say, say, replace this thing or clean it up and it goes and looks at other images and tries to rebuild it. It's not fixing the image, it's going and remaking parts of it and it's really amazing. I'm just waiting for Adobe to buy something like it. Um, so if I have a really, really bad noisy image, something like Topaz would be what I'd go to. Okay, you can do a lot of noise um, fixing in Lightroom and I'll show you how to do that, but I am waiting for them just to throw that in there because that is one of the cool things about AI at the moment. Good question. Um, uh, Dan, uh, no, Dan version. Vernson. Hi Dan, uh, do you have any experience in coding and web development? Kind of, coding, no, markup, yes. So HTML, CSS, I know pretty well. And um, anything dynamic or uh, anything that it needs proper coding, PHP, um, you know, dealing with databases, that's out of my scope. If you do wanna like get into coding, you've never done it before, check out my, um, HTML and CSS um, course, it is VS Code, what is it called, Web Design Essentials. Check out that, that'll get you, I, like, I reckon that course will get you to a point before you can go off to somebody else, but that's as far as I can get you. Um, yeah, it's JavaScript, no, I copy and paste it. I do a lot of copy and paste of anything that's too hard, and, but normal kind of HTML, CSS, yes. That is, here you go. Uh, James, is there anything you can do in Classic that you can't do in CC? <clears throat> yes, but not helpful. There will be loads of people out there who'll be like, oh, you can't do this in the new one. That's why I'm sticking with this one. You can do something very similar, maybe not that quickie thing. Um, let's say that, let's say uh, Lightroom Classic is amazing, but it's a shed full of tools, okay? But you only need to hammer some nails in. You need to fix some images. It's too many tools. Like there's just way more than you need. Okay, what they've done with Lightroom CC or Lightroom Desktop is they've gone, don't need that, don't need that because this other thing does that and they've just tidied it up and I find it better and I can get amazing results. There will be loads of people out there who are Lightroom Classic users, way more hardcore than me, that will challenge that and that's fine. You know, they'll be doing maybe some really tricky stuff with some really weird things that the new version it's not that new either. They just kind of like shifted it over and can do. I don't know. Does that answer your questions? Yes, but it's pretty dense going. Uh, to 201. Um, when do you get a certificate from Adobe? How difficult is it? So that's something I want to get into more. They're changing everything. So I'm a Adobe, Adobe certified instructor and they've changed my exams lately as well. They used to have something called the Adobe Certified Associate. They're now doing ACP, Adobe Certified Professional. I need to look into it. How hard is it? I haven't seen the new exam for them. The ACA one was pretty um, easy, uh, easy enough. For somebody who's done one of my courses, you could do that. I think we'll try and do it at Bring Your Laptop and help people actually get that certificate on top of our ones as well, um, maybe in the new year. Um, so the Adobe Certified Professional, I, th I haven't, done the exam myself, but my the word is is that it's doable. If you've done my essentials in advance, I think you'll nail it. Um, but I'll look into it more next year, sign up and bring a laptop, be part of that, and I will probably proctor some of those exams and help a bunch of people do it at the same time. Um, but that'll be next year. Uh, Dan Versch, uh, what is the difference between your essentials videos and the normal other ones? I don't know what the, basically what I break my courses into, essentials and advanced. And basically the advanced is for people who finish essentials. That's what it's there for. The other courses that I've done, either I've done before I started naming them essentials um, or they're just not relevant to be in essentials advanced. James, what's the origin behind the name Bring Your Laptop? That was a good question. I had no money. <laughs> and basically I worked at a place, um, training companies, 
um, one big one called an academy class in London and I was moving back to New Zealand. I want to start my own. There was no certified training center in New Zealand where I'm from. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start a training center. Looked into it, expensive enough to get set up, but I, I couldn't afford a room <laughs> and I couldn't afford computers. I could afford, and I couldn't really afford the licenses either. Um, just had no money. Um, so what I did was bring your own laptop is by necessity. I try to make it out like it was a... Um, like a perk, like, oh, you get to work on your own laptop instead of this other computer that costs a lot of money. <laughs> and, you know, bring your own one. So that was it. That was my niche. I started the first bring your laptop, first Adobe certified training center in New Zealand. And we used to work from like function rooms, backs of bars, uh, co-working spaces, any place I could find a room big enough for the people that had signed up for the course. They brought along their, brought along their own laptops, bring your own laptop. That's how I got my name. That's a good question. That's never been asked before. Why is your why is that weird name at the front of your company? It's because that's what started it all. And now it kind of seems like it fits still as well. It's my brand, for better or worse. But also, you're bringing your own laptop. Like it's you're doing it on your own time, at your own pace. Um, there you go. Uh, the Clearway Force. Do you cover much wedding photography, editing, in the Lightroom course? I do a section on it. Basically. I don't want to say this. There's no difference between editing this photograph and and wedding photography. I know wedding photography has uh, specific needs, but I don't do just a section all about uh, wedding. We do wedding photographs as part of it, but I kind of spread it out with landscape and macro and product and wedding and portraiture and like a lot of the things that we do in portraiture, like retouching and those sorts of things. I don't do again for the uh, for the wedding course, but if you're a wedding photographer, you'll get loads out of this. Um, you go. James, why did Adobe ditch Dimensions? I think they still got it. They're unsure. They're stuck in a place where they've got, they were trying to do their own 3D. They were licensing Cinema 4D, trying to support other 3D programs. They bought Surface. <coughs> the, yeah, I don't think the dust has settled quite yet on what they're going to do because Surface um, has all its cool 3D things, but they're really tricky to learn. Okay, I find them tricky to use. Um, and you know, I know 3D pretty well. Whereas Dimension, for you that know it, it's like throw it in, throw it in. Oh, it's awesome. So yeah. Uh Masby, uh, how long would it take uh will it take me to master, be a master like you? I am 42. That's how long. <laughs> ah. Like uh, I I don't wish this actually. It would be good, it would be faster if I had my own courses to learn on, okay? Because it'd be super fast. I go the long, long, long way by finding, working it out myself. I enjoy that part of it and I know it's important for me to do it that way now, especially so say I'm gonna learn something new, like I'm learning Fusion 360. I know I need to just teach myself and do YouTube tutorials because I find all those things that are wrong and somehow I remember all that. So when I build a course, I'm like, that stumped me. That was hard. That was way too tricky. That person taught it weirdly and I'm going to do it better. I'm always thinking like that when I'm learning bits of software. So you can do it way faster than I did because you can go through some of the courses. And I hope my courses are good and concise and very logical. Um, I go the illogical, dipping in and out, trying to do my own stuff, it all going wrong, writing myself notes way so yeah, you can you can do a lot quicker than me. Uh, Wayne, I have a 27 inch uh, 2019 iMac on uh, Catalina. The latest update of Illustrator will not be compatible. Is uh, is my old Mac? Is it my old Mac or Catalina? I don't think so. Your Mac isn't that old. It'd just be your uh, operating system. So you're just gonna have to upgrade that. You'll get to a point where Apple won't support your iMac, but Adobe will support anything as long as it's the uh, operating system. And it's your uh, Apple it will eventually go, we can't upgrade to the next uh, um, operating system because your uh, uh, computer's too old. But that is not too old. It's getting close though. <laughs> Five years, six years, it's kind of dinosaur years, or dog years for um, um, computers. Um, Hendrik, uh, any plans on doing Adobe Audition course? Feel, uh, feel there are a few good resources on working with the sound editing. 
I think I butchered that question, but um, good question. When I originally thought about doing uh, Premiere Pro way back when, I was like, ah, oh, it's too tricky. I'll do some other ones that I that are a bit easier to do. I had a section I was going to do a, uh, an audition mini course, and just as things go along, Light, uh, Premiere Pro got way better. I'm not sure, Hendrik, if you've done the Premiere Pro course, but Essential Sound is basically the good bits that I used to go back and forth from audition from to fix my sound, and then they put them all in like uh, Essential Sound. And I'm like, I was just kind of doing the course, and I was like. Oh, okay, I'll pull that out of my audition course. I'll pull that out of my audition course. And then I was like, there's nothing left in the audition course because they just pulled it in there. If you're a sound engineer, there's stuff to do. And I'm not a sound engineer, so I'd be not be able to do a very good course. I'm a like sound for video person. And Essential Sound just does so much good stuff. Select, like, select it all, balance all the audio, get all the loudness right, extend the audio track so that it's longer. Oh, it's just super good. Get rid of the noise. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Orion, uh, can you upload short intro videos on Adobe? Can you upload short intro videos on Adobe 2023 programs? Updated features. Oh uh, yeah, I'm working on those at the moment, kind of updates for the new software. They'll go on to the end of the courses and uh, once I've finished them. Good idea. Um, Reen Stewart, uh, is there much reason to use Lightroom when you're already good with Photoshop? Give it a try because I'm more of a Photoshop guy until I got better at Lightroom and then you're like, oh man, just super quick and easy to make things look way better then I, I could probably get there in, in Photoshop, but it'd take a lot longer. So I would, I'd do it. Especially if you're like, even if you end up doing just a couple of like, got a camera and you end up shooting like 20, 30 photographs, you can just really quickly make them look great in uh, Lightroom, enter them all. Whereas Photoshop, you got to kind of open each individual image. I'd give it a try. Because I'm a designer more than a photographer, but retouching, is pretty good in Lightroom and just some of the kind of like making things look really good is great in Lightroom. Um, James, have you considered take, uh, talking to Webflow about their education deal so students can get a free site plan? Yeah, I, yeah, no, I don't have a really good in. I have a really good in with photo, uh, Adobe, but not with Webflow. I've only made one course and they don't know who I am. So yeah, I have no influence on what they're doing. Um, there you go. That's my answer to that. Um, another question from uh, Dan Version. Uh, can you do a video on all Adobe softwares, including Creative Cloud, and explain how these all are integrated? Uh, would be great for those who have zero knowledge in design softwares. Yeah, that's a good one. Taylor, can you send me an email about that one? Can you pass um, Dan uh, Vision's question and send it to me? We should do that. Okay, that'll be super helpful for everyone because I know what they all do and what you should use them for, but there was a time where I didn't. And I'm sure a lot of you out there don't, don't have any need to know what, I don't know, captivators <laughs> or character animator. All right, uh, Jerry, Jerry May, uh, what do you want to improve on Adobe products, Incl including also the pricing? What do you want to improve on Adobe products? What do I want to improve? Hmm, it gets tricky. My problem with Adobe is they buy software instead of making it, and that's the way they've always done it. They bought, they bought everything. They didn't, you know, I think they made InDesign. They make InDesign? They've bought everything, anyway. And it's tricky when you get to a point like now, and we're talking about Figma versus XD, and you're like, ah, oh, it would be great if it was just XD, because then you could... They're building it purposely to fit onto the Adobe ecosystem. Say with Substance, okay, uh, 3D software. Now they're trying to integrate other people's stuff. They've got different pricing plans. It gets murky. Probably not for everyone else. Maybe just for me. But um, I really like that Adobe has... Uh, people complain about the price, and I can totally understand that cut to a degree. Um, I, you know, I can afford it. So it seems like the bargain of the century to me because if I was a plumber, I'd have to spend way more on tools 
than I would as a graphic designer. That subscription every month, I know it adds up, okay? But like to be my profession, it's amazing what I can do and what I can create and what I can charge with that license. I wanna do, you know, any trade. <laughs> You're gonna need way more money to even start doing jobs than you need to to build the best visual effects movie intro ever made you know like i don't know that's that's what i see it but i remember being a student and i remember not being able to afford it and it was annoying but then when i became a paid professional everything changes like man this is a bargain I get all of these things all these things i don't even use <laughs> it felt good <laughs> now i try and use them all um um sub head to uh Hello, sir. I am working in develops, uh, but I always found UX and UI interesting. I'm a complete beginner in UX. Or do you think uh, I can start your UX UI course or do I need to prerequisite knowledge? Nope. My courses, anything that says essentials on my website is meant to be from zero to hero. Like, hey, you've never even opened the program before. So my advice would be you are perfect. Got a vague interest in it. Not even sure what it is properly go do um, a UX UI course, do Figma or XD, up to you, doesn't matter which one it is, they're very similar because we're doing the same thing. We're doing UX design, and if you end up switching between programs, doesn't matter, You the skills are transferable. Um, now, uh, Naja, uh, what's the story behind your photo shoots, bird costumes? <laughs> you know, will we see more, please? Uh, if you do the Lightroom course, you get to see a few of them. Um, Basically, the photo shoot of me in the bird costume, and uh, th there's a bunch of them that I'll slowly, I like to kind of try and make it a little bit more fun during the courses, and I don't know, it seemed like a good idea. I was like, hey, Taylor. Um, so Taylor Coman, his girlfriend, Taylor Sloan, is a photographer, like a, a professional photographer, and I was like, hey, can, I, <laughs> can we get some costumes together and make some shoots for headshots that aren't like Dan just doing like, for you? For YouTube, so we get to do fun stuff for YouTube, but also like the Lightroom course, it's kind of funny. I like poking fun at myself. I, I think it's important that the professional isn't too, like, I don't know, full of himself or I don't know. It's awkward. I don't <laughs> trying things, trying to figure them out. I don't think it's a success, but it's funny. I see them and I laugh at myself, and I think it makes uh, humanizes a little bit, kind of lowers the like. All right, this is it's the serious stuff we're doing. Like we're learning good professional stuff, but we can have a laugh too. Uh, no budget, uh, which keyboard are you using now? And what are your preferences in between keyboard versus Wacom type devices? So I've got this like clickety clack one. Can I type on stuff without? Yeah, I can. So I'll type over here. Can you hear it? I like it because it makes that noise. And weirdly, you might like it too. Um, can't remember who makes this one. Uh, Keychron, but there's a few of them out. This is a mechanical keyboard. So I bought it and then I bought separate keys, different keys to make the different noise. I've got a drawer full of keys that were a bit more like softer. I got these ones. Reminds me of the good old days and it has, there's some sort of nice effect when I'm typing fast. I love the sound of it. <laughs> uh, I like keyboards as well that have um, the number keypad because I'm good typing that. And Wacom versus mouse. Uh, I end up using mouse more often now because I, I switch between too many programs now, and this is, seems to be a good general one. So this is, uh, this one's called uh, <clears throat> uh, Logitech M720. I love it so much. Um, mainly, the main bit about it is the scroll wheel. The scroll wheel has the normal click, 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 but there's a button you can turn off and it scrolls infinitely fast. It just scrolls and it just spins. Um, and that's really good for video editing. I can get to, I can just go forward, back, and if I want to skip to the end, I just roll that little thing, and it just rolls along, and then I just stop it with my finger where I want it to be. If I was an illustrator or a graphic designer, I used a Wacom a lot more when I was like, that was my only job, working somewhere. Um, so I used Wacom then. I used the rollerball. Remember those ones? Have you ever seen them? Like the ball on top? I loved that for a little while. To be honest, though, I don't think it matters as much it does, it does matter. I love this mouse, I love this keyboard, but guess what, I travel a lot and I do just as good design work on this tiny trackpad here. I'm like like a T-Rex, kind of like trying to like do my design work. And it's a bit awkward if you haven't used it for a little while, but after a couple of minutes, I'm like, I'm doing good stuff. 
<laughs> and this uh, this um, keyboard here has the magic touch bar. Can't remember what to call it. The touch bar on top. It's quite good for video editing, like and Adobe software because it adjusts to the, some of the common things along the top there. And I end up using that. And but yeah, that's that's my answer to that question. Don't ask me about technology because I love talking about it. Now other people are like, oh, get on with the do uh, design stuff, Dan. Right. What time are we at? Oh man, we've been going a while. Okay. One more question. Ah, oh, yeah, it's from uh, James. Oh, mm, let's find the best one here. Oh, sorry. Last question. Oh, this one's good. Uh, can OpenAI um, DALI E2 steal jobs from graphic designers in the future? That's the kind of like automatic photo creator stuff. And, and will it be? No. I'm looking forward. Am I looking forward to a day? Got to be careful with this one because there is. So it's automatically making photographs, which is pretty amazing. And Adobe uh, talked about this at Adobe Max because they are getting involved with this sort of stuff, like making stuff, uh, you know, just inventing images. It clearly could be problematic if you're a stock photography photographer, okay? And that's a reckoning that I think is going to happen for that industry. If you are taking photographs for those stock library sites, there'll be a, there'll be a place for it because nobody, you don't need a computer to generate a picture of, uh, what's something, person with um, little, ear, you know, like uh, the help lady that's on all the websites, the, you know, live chat lady. And it's never her. It's just like gorgeous looking woman with a like a little mouthpiece on and the little kind of like 19, early 2000s kind of like talk center person. We don't need any more of those. We don't need a computer to generate them. It's when it gets to things like, I, I can't wait for a bit to go into Photoshop or Lightroom and just say, uh, I'd like a field with two trees towards the back. Can I have a lake on the right? And can we have a signpost saying, uh, pointing, you know, at, that says X, Y, Z sale, you know, and it starts generating the thing. Okay. And I can move it around, adjust it, pick different trees. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm s it's getting closer. So if uh, getting a photographer to do it, I wouldn't need, but like, that'd be a tricky thing to get anyway. Okay. I'd probably just f be photo montaging it in Photoshop. So just save me time as a graphic designer. If I need a picture of beautiful mountains in New Zealand, I'm just going to get a photographer to do them or buy them or license them from um, somebody that's made them. So yes and no, but I am looking forward to, you know, like give Dan a fringe. <laughs> I love a fringe. <laughs> ah, too much to ask uh, artificial intelligence, I think. Uh, on that, I'd like to wrap up by saying uh, thanks for being here. Lightroom Essentials, the course is out now. Okay, it's at bringyourlaptop.com um, slash or byol.com slash Lightroom. Come do the course with me. Can't wait to see your projects. There's loads through it. Okay, if you do the course, you get a certificate. If you go that extra level and answer all the questions, you can get a certificate with merit. And the course is live right now. Bring your own laptop. That is going to be it. Uh, oh. Okay, the live. Oh, oh, last thing. Uh, <laughs> I understand now. So that is it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Before you go, like the video. I'm waiting. Please like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are just kind of stumbled across here. Um, but other than that, thanks for being part of it. I hope the Q&A was uh, useful. And I will see you in another video. And I'll see you in Lightroom. Uh, bringyourlaptop.com slash Lightroom. Check out the